Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Family and Friends update. My name is Petronella Andabele, and I'm the Director of Strategic Communications and Stakeholder Relations. I'll be guiding today's program. We are watching this webinar from different places, and for many of us, Canada is a place where we now call home, and I will begin by giving the land acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewam, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with Mississaugas of the Credit, and the William Street is signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. We also acknowledge that we are all treaty peoples, including those who came here as settlers, as migrants, either in this generation or in generations past, and those of us who came here involuntarily, particularly as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. Today, we pay tribute to the ancestors of those of African and indigenous origin and descent. On your screen now is our agenda for today. And before we begin, we have many updates in store. Next month is special as we celebrate Community Living Month in May. We will be kicking off with the shiny light on community living where major landmarks across Ontario will be shining blue and green in support of the month. Join us by having a blue and or green light at your entrance or windows on May 1st. We'll also have glow sticks sent to group homes to celebrate the month. Community living agencies across Ontario will also be coming together for a day at Queen's Park on May 8th with an opportunity to engage with our MPPs. On May 29th, don't forget to join the community and share your I took a break 24 moment with thousands of others coming together through this social media campaign. When you do that, don't forget to take Community Living Toronto and Community Living Ontario and use the hashtag I took a break 24. You can also visit our website to download I took a break 24 package and join the movement towards building a more inclusive society. We are also thrilled to celebrate the National Volunteer Week with all of you and are going to hear today from the voices that matter. We are joined by a team working closely with our volunteers and community councils. And for our fireside chat, we will hear from Gina Binet, one of volunteers at Community Living Toronto. It is now my pleasure to call upon Anne Marie Binet, Senior Manager, Community Engagement and Advocacy. Tim, over to you. Thank you so much, Petronella, for that wonderful welcome. We are so thrilled to be here today to talk about National Volunteer Week and all the great work that we're doing here at Community Living Toronto in regards to our um, volunteer program. So I'm thrilled to show to share with you the theme of for National Volunteer Week for 2024, and it's Every Moment Matters. This theme speaks volumes about the significance of every volunteer and their contribution, especially during these challenging times when support is needed more than ever. Think about it, the time, skills, empathy, and creativities volunteers share are the lifeblood of our communities. They play a critical role in fostering inclusion, strength, and well-being among us. In essence, volunteers are the cornerstone of resilience. When we unite, offer our support, and amplify our collective efforts, we enhance the quality of life of all and um, we all aspire to. It's through these moments and the connections we form that we discover a deeper sense of purpose and belonging. By engaging with our communities, we recognize our value and shape the society where we want to live in. Each act of every volunteer contributes to creating neighborhoods, cultures, and communities where we all thrive. No contribution is too small. Together, we can shift from merely surviving to truly thriving. 
As we're in National Volunteer Week, which runs from April 14th to the 20th, we honor and celebrate the impact of each and every volunteer from coast to coast, and especially here at Community Living Toronto. Remember now more than ever, every moment matters. We are currently, here at Community Living Toronto, we're currently rebuilding our volunteer program. As you know, it was really tough to, to um, support volunteers during COVID, but you know, in the past year, we've been welcoming vol volunteers back within our programs. Um, we actually just went through a co-design proce process with a company called People Minded Business. And you know, this is really um this really included listening to volunteers, listening to people we support to our programs, and really looking at how to again rebuild our program. Um, we through this process again, we identified target areas of volunteers um, that included um marketing to students and youth, to culturally diverse communities, to those with spare time, and for those who just want to make a difference. As we continue to build our volunteer program, you'll see some new and innovative ways we're attracting and retaining and celebrating our volunteers. Um, but for now, I'd love you to meet some of our amazing team who's gonna help to make this happen. Carmen, I'm gonna have you introduce yourself. So thank you, Anne-Marie. So my name is Carmen Wolaku. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator that oversees the Etobicoke, York, and North York region. So we do a lot with um, volunteer management as well as supporting our uh, councils. Uh, Hannah? Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Hannah Ertel, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Central Community. Uh, really happy to be here and to talk about this important topic. I'll pass it over to Tom. Hello, my name is Tom Gaspar. I'm the newest uh, team member of the community engagement team. Um, so I'm specifically uh, working with uh, the community of Scarborough, and I'm really excited to uh, see what our team can offer uh, Community Living Toronto, our volunteers and our members. Thank you. Awesome. And not with us today is Tracy O'Regan, who's our um, Inclusion and Advocacy Supervisor. And uh, Tracy helps to support our CLTO influencers, as well as um, does a lot of work around inclusive education and supporting um, folks in the community um, around education issues. And then again, um, myself, I'm Amory Benetti, and I'm the senior program manager for the um, for the team, and um, here to support you in any way and support the team to make these wonderful things happen. So here at Community Living Toronto, we have lots of opportunities. You know, the way that we look at um, creating opportunities is really listening to the people we support and ensuring that they're front and center in everything we do. So always looking at innovative, creative ways um, to um, include volunteers to really um, make things happen for the people that we support. So here are a few great opportunities. So firstly, um, looking at our high High school students. So we know that within high school, students have to uh, complete a num uh, 40 hours before they can graduate. So here at Community Living Toronto, we help support these students by um, having opportunities that fit into their schedules. So we, um, we have um, special event volunteers. So for instance, um, students can volunteer at our family fun fair, which is a yearly event that right now is happening at our loss and location where we welcome almost a thousand people from our communities and have a, a fantastic barbecue, um, carnival games, uh, bouncy castle. So it's a really, really fun day and a really, really great way for those students to get their um, their volunteer hours. Another great event is a bi-year, a bi-annual event called Community Rocks, which is our major um, fundraiser. And um, Again, really great opportunity for students to get their hours. It's a concert, it's a party, lots of fantastic opportunities. Some uh, other opportunities for people to volunteer with Community Live in Toronto include one-to-one -one volunteering. So this, this really um, includes looking at um, uh, matching people, um, so people that we support that are receiving supports through Community Living Toronto and volunteers, 
based on their their interests, their talents, their gifts, um, what they want to bring to the table and ensuring that there's um, a good match for folks. So that's part of what the team does is help to match people one to one with volunteering. Another um, opportunity is to is small group volunteering. We're going to hear an example of that in a, in a while. So if you have a few friends, you have an idea, you want to um, come and approach us and have some, you know, fun doing it. We're open to hearing ideas and creating opportunities for small group um, volunteering. Another opportunity is through our friendly connection. So this was actually a program that started during COVID and it was really important um, to help people to overcome um, isolation. Um, so we had opportunities for people to connect with volunteers over Zoom, over phone calls, um, as well as through the mail, through receiving activity um, packages, as well as letters and postcards. Um, so again, um, now we continue to um, to have those connections through letters and, and postcards. And you're gonna hear about um, one of our volunteers, Gina, with the, who's gonna be with the in the fireside chat with Brad. Um, and, uh, but again, lots of great opportunities for friendly connection. Another um, opportunity at Community Living Toronto, of course, is with our board of directors and our board committees. Um, so currently we have a number of postings available for the CLTO board committee. So if you look at our website um, under the volunteer section, you will see the postings um, for the recruitment for the board committee. So um, if you're interested, please check them out and it has some details about how you can get involved. And last but not least are our community councils, which are in four of our communities. So Etobicoke, York, North York, Central and um, Scarborough. And again, these community councils are looking at local activities that can support our communities and combat poverty in our communities. So looking at advocacy, they, they help with advocacy, as well as running um, activities for the members in that community to help them, again, connect to other people and to um, to help them, again, um, in things like navigating the system, building relationships and 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 in a lot of instances having fun and connecting again. So these are just to name a few opportunities. Um, I'm going to pass on the next slide to Hannah to talk about what the benefits are. Awesome. Thanks, Amory. Um, so I'll just dive right in here. So um, one of the benefits is uh, flexible opportunities. So um, we understand that everybody has busy lives. A lot of people are in school or have families um, or whatnot. And uh, we want to make sure that the opportunities um, fit um, in your schedule and are working for you. Um, volunteering is a great way uh, to uh, gain new skills and experience. So when you're volunteering, you're widening your skill set. Um, and it's also a great opportunity for uh, mentorship and making new connections. Um, we offer um, high school hours for students, so we have many students um, who come to Community Living Toronto to complete their 40 hours, um, and we've had a few that stay on after completing their hours um, because they've enjoyed the opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity to showcase your talents, so um, if you have a particular talent like music, um, art, um, it's a great way to share it with others here. So um, pictured on the left-hand side, we have Emily D, Emily L, Dawn, and Candy, um, as well as some of the folks that we support. Um, these uh, individuals volunteered at our family fun fair back in September, and um, it had a really big impact on them, and they were interested in uh, continuing to volunteer with Community Living Toronto um, and they now volunteer um, at uh, a home where people are living on Margaret Avenue. They visit there about one to two times a month. Uh, they come with planned activities. Um, some of them also play instruments. Um, and I know the home has a piano, so that's super fun. Um, and uh, in this picture, uh, they are actually doing, it was their most recent visit and they were doing an Easter activity. So super fun. Um, and they've really built some meaningful connections, which they keep coming back to. 
Um, and I think this is just a really great example of the impact that volunteering can have. Um, and I'll pass it back over to Carmen. Awesome, thank you, Hannah. So if you're looking to share your skills or time to join our dedicated uh, dedicated team of volunteers, we've actually made our volunteer intake process as simple as possible. Um, the best way and also the fastest to get started is to give us an email at volunteers at saletoronto.ca and we'll direct you to the appropriate community engagement coordinator for your area who will walk you through the volunteer process as well as get you settled in one of our programs. Super, thank you so much. So I would like to bring to everyone's attention a super fantastic opportunity occurring on Wednesday, May 1st, 2024, our Leaders in Philanthropy event. So we would really ask you to join us as we celebrate the amazing impact of our incredible donors, volunteers, and supporters. It's going to take place in North York at the Parkview Manor. Um, it's going to start at 5 p.m. with reception and cocktails, with uh, awards and remarks at 6 p.m. with a reception to follow. This year, we have a special guest speaker, Rocco Rossi, who's an adventurer, community leader, and philanthropist. Um, we'd really look forward to seeing you. We'd like to see you there. So if you'd like to attend or have any questions, you can reach out to us at volunteers at cltoronto.ca. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much to our community engagement team and Thank you so much to our volunteers. And always, again, if you're interested in volunteer, we'd love to hear volunteering. We'd love to hear from you and hope to see you on May 1st so we could celebrate together. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Anne Marie, Carmen, Hannah, and Tom, and everyone. We thank you so much. We appreciate the work our volunteers are doing to make a difference in our community. And next, we have our fireside chat as we continue to celebrate the contributions of volunteers, not just within CLTO, but across the community. I'm pleased to welcome Gina Binet, a volunteer with Community Living Toronto, for our friendly connections program. Thank you for joining us today, Gina, and over to you, Brad. All right. Thank you, Petronella. Gina, good to see you. Um, Hi. As you know, it's Volunteer Week, and we're celebrating this uh, at Community Living Toronto. And you are an outstanding volunteer, so we thought we'd spend a uh, – <laughs> to embarrass you a little bit. Um, <laughs> we thought we'd spend a, a little bit of time chatting about uh, you and your volunteer experience with Community Living Toronto and perhaps other organizations. So maybe, Gina, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I live in Toronto um, with my sister, and I um, – for work, I am a film and TV editor, and um, I like to camp. I'm going on a big trip in August in a voyageur canoe, so I'm pretty excited about that. Are those are the ones with like seven people and There's lots of paddles. Actually, and... It'll be a dozen people. Plus, in one canoe? Plus gear. Yeah, they're wow. huge. They're five, I think they're five feet across. And I forget how long they are, but yeah, they're really big. So this isn't a lightweight kind of vessel that you'll be <laughs> no. voyaging in. Fantastic. No, sounds good. So, team, uh, you you're, you do uh, you do sort of professional video and uh, film editing. What uh, what what uh, tell tell us about that a little bit? Sounds uh, fascinating. I um, mostly work in television, but um, my favorite genre to work in is documentaries okay. and I've done a lot of history documentaries social justice documentaries I love I love documentaries because every every show is new you right. learn something new you meet great people so that's sort of where I love to work and then I also work on um other shows for kind of HGTV kind of shows and um house hunters yeah, international that kind of thing and yeah that sort of okay. reno stuff and okay good um lately i've been working on some of the romance films that are on tv so, okay yeah bit a bit of everything good hopefully there's a hallmark christmas story movie coming with your credit on it <laughs> um so that's what you do professionally but you also have a pretty active volunteer life as well. Do you want to talk about um, sort of your your involvement with volunteering and then how you got connected with uh, Community Living Toronto? 
Sure. I um so I'm part of my community association. Mm -hmm. um, we're called the Pocket Community Association. And I'm also part within that, there's an, a, another group which is focused on um, the environment. So okay. anything we can do in our community, plant trees, um, we're doing retrofits of houses to um, limit our greenhouse gases and education, outreach, stuff like that. So I do that. And um, at Community Living, I've done various things. I've made some videos with Community Living. And um, I've been to um, the Family Fun Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I volunteered at that last. That was fun. It was and, a fun day. Uh, and I've been part of the um, the Friendly Connections program. Okay. And that's been a big highlight for you, Friendly Connections. So Friendly Connections was a way for that, that we started over uh, COVID where mm -hmm. lots of people were feeling isolated and sense of loneliness because they couldn't leave their homes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and we developed a, a, a way to, for, to connect people with each other um, to help allevi alleviate homelessness. And that's the program that you got involved with. Yes. And I started on zoom and I was really bad at zoom um <laughs> well we're on zoom now you seem to be doing okay so no that's... well no because years of having <laughs> to use it but at that time you know it was all new I don't think a lot right. of people were using zoom so but I did um chats just short chats with people and um it was really nice because I I was sent home to work so I have not right. left my house since since the first lockdown They've never called us back into the office. So it was really okay. nice to see people. And, now, and now when, when, the when you say you haven't thing. when you say you haven't left your house, you don't mean <laughs> no. literally, literally. I don't mean literally. No, I don't mean literally. You've been outside. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. A little, little worried. But, <laughs> uh, no, but it 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 was nice to be able to see people and that whole um I still marvel that we can do this it because it's yeah. still in my mind. It's like Jetsons, you know, the being I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. You've <laughs> got a little phone in your pocket and you can connect with people all over the world. It's amazing. Exactly, and friendly yeah. connections is a way of of sort of doing that. So so what I so the, the connection piece, you were interested, obviously, with your volunteer background, you're interested in uh, in being involved with people and providing some support, some help. Um, but you also did it because you were feeling a little isolated and and thought that it was quite yeah. Uh, I just thought reciprocal. I thought it was a great idea because we did have you know we had stuff in our in my community for checking in on elderly and all that right. stuff. But um, this yeah, it just seemed like a really nice thing to be able to do. So how did it uh, how did it go for you or what was your you you once once you got started and we're doing on uh, doing on Zoom how did it sort of work. We just did um, once a week check-ins and just sort of had short conversations. And um, did you have a list you, of people that you were working through or working connected was with? Or was it one person in particular? One person. Um, okay. And now I've, I was working with someone at community living mm -hmm. through, and I, she's gone now, but I can't remember okay. what her name was. It's just, okay out of my brain That's okay. um, she organized everything now um I'm with Hannah mm -hmm. and Annette they're like great support great so 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 you'd get on zoom uh when you figured out how to use it and speak <laughs> yeah. with unmuting yourself and all that and what kind of conversations would you have with uh, the person that you were connected with Mostly, you know, what were you up to in the past week or what, what are you looking forward to? Um, any plans, any mostly about t going outside, walking, what right. the weather was like, how the trees were coming into bloom, just sort of, yeah, um, observation of life outside of where you know the the house kind of thing right there right. wasn't a lot of going out so it was mostly walks meeting friends for walks that kind of thing right 
Right. Now, how did that relationship or did, did one person grow to become more or how did the how did things uh, evolve for you with with friendly connections? Well, then I think what happened was because the lockdowns ended and everything and people started the program started back up. Right. So everybody got really busy and it was really hard to schedule anything with, a you know, people started going back to appointments right. and all that. So then it morphed into uh, writing, um, writing letters to people. Okay. So I had a group of people that I wrote letters to and, and um, sent coloring pages and activity sheets. And then that's where that took off. And Great. so I've been doing that now for, I think, three years, two or three okay. years. Okay. And that the, was it this with the same intent? So writing to people that may not have uh, a lot of connections uh, beyond their sort of immediate so, circle yeah. or staying in touch and that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. Okay. And you're writing corresponding now, is it actual letters like with a quill pen and a and a <laughs> ink thing? Well, or are you uh, are you? Is I'm it email typing. or what's the process? You're typing <laughs> things out. Okay. I type them out. And, um, but I, I have so, like postcards I write out. So, and every time I've gone away, I've right. been able to send postcards from wherever I am. Oh, so nice. Because, because I can't write the letters because I'm not home. I can't send the packages out. Then right. I just write postcards to everybody. Okay. What's, how many people are you corresponding with and, and how regularly? So, now I'm up to 34 uh, once a week. So you're doing 34 different letters or postcards uh, to people all around. Are they just in the city or are they? is it go beyond that? All or? around Ontario, all around Ontario. So um, I don't know much about the individuals except for right. some of them who write me back, but Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing actually because now you see their addresses and it's all over the place. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Kind of neat, yeah. And you've been doing that. You've been writing thirty four ish people for the last two or three years, uh, almost weekly. It's gotten up to thirty four. I think I started with ten. Even still, that yeah. that's a that's a, a tremendous amount of dedication on your part to to take that on for so long. They're, what uh, what 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 drives you to motivate you to continue to uh, uh, to keep at it? Oh, I just I love getting mail, and so I just I like writing, and I write I like that way of corresponding with letters. Right. So, and I've always loved it. Like even um, when I was younger, I I would write when I moved away from home, I would write like my little brother letters and we would okay. just I don't know. There's I love the idea of getting something other than a bill in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> True, really enough. True enough. True enough. So now you, you you mentioned that some people write you back. What uh, how did that come to pass? And, and what's uh, has anything stood out from you from those that those course that correspondence oh yeah they're the correspondence back's been really lovely and um I'll, i can flip through i just what i do is i save them all and they all have tons of letters and postcards and uh yeah things that they've colored so it's really nice to get them. Is that, on, is one, that what they've colored? Sorry, what they've colored is things that you've sent them I've and sent then they're them. returning them. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Excellent. So, what stands out from from anything? Is there anything that you that uh, stands out in your memory that was particularly poignant or meaningful for you from the letters that you? Uh, I do back? have one. One of um, my friend Shania. She she's pretty prolific writer. Okay. And she, we share stuff like she sends me recipes and, you know, we talk about, I think some people cook a lot and I bake. Yeah. So I talk about my baking and things. So we get back and forth um, responses about that. So she sent okay. me some really good recipes, but okay. she sent me this poem that I thought I would read. It's really, 
Yeah, please do. Lovely. It's called A Good Friend. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like a good friend to tell your troubles to. Someone to open up with, someone to talk you through. The highs and lows, the everyday struggles, someone who knows your every quirk and flaw, someone who understands your ways and loves you after all. That's like beautiful. That's so sweet. And that's a poem that she wrote herself. I'm not or sure if she wrote it herself, but she sent it to me. And Fantastic. she just with wishes to enjoy the poem and hoping I have a good week. So Oh nice. Yeah. Nice. So really you fun. this this has been a real uh, reciprocal kind of relationship and sort of experience that you've had where you're reaching out to a lot of people and you're uh, it sounds like you're getting at least as much as you put in in terms of uh, intrinsic oh, reward and, and value yeah oh absolutely yeah fantastic yeah. fantastic what is it about what do you think um, what is it about you that makes you want to give that kind of time towards uh, people in your community and you're your connected with your pocket group uh that's doing a whole bunch of stuff what uh what is it what is the magic around volunteering for you that makes it uh, uh so important i think um i think it's it's the sense of the village right belonging to each other and holding each other up and i think it's important for humans to interact and and lift each other up yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's interesting so we're recording this the day after the eclipse yes and uh it was i was watching tv and i saw part of it i was in sort of an overcast area so I didn't get the full benefit of uh of totality or anything or even a fantastic experience but i was struck by how much uh that event brought people together and just sort of, it's a reminder that although so much of what we do these days is connected, staring into a screen, doing yeah. things alone, that there still is this real vital need that we have to belong, to share experiences together, to be to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like Absolutely. that's something that you're, you know, one. This is one way. I was going to say one small way, but what you're doing is not small. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of. Uh, effort and care on your part so um is that sort of uh, align with your thinking or, or of your friends in your pocket group that uh that do this that volunteer pretty consistently i think so yeah i think you're i think everybody has sort of a responsibility we have a responsibility to each other we all share right. the planet and so it just if everybody sort of shared their their talents with each other and we're a kinder and gentler planet and respect the planet and each other. I think just, it would be a, a nicer world in general. No one would disagree with, uh, <laughs> would disagree with that. So it, um, you've been a volunteer, as you mentioned with community living Toronto and other organizations for many years, what advice would you have for people that are considering volunteering or kind of on this fence going, I don't know if I have time, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, hey, any advice? I think, yes. I, I think the biggest thing that stops people is they don't think they have time, but what I find is a lot of different volunteer, because I've volunteered at many different other places other than community living and it's also they're very accommodating because I think you can basically say I have one hour a week to volunteer right. and someone will need you for one hour a week right so I don't I don't think there should be any barrier until someone tells you I don't need you and I right I do not think that would happen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the way the the volunteering that you're doing, this is I think about it, it's probably it's a kind of activity that you can do uh whenever you have an hour. It doesn't, it's not uh there's you know, some volunteering yes. requires that you're at a place at a time. Yes. This, you've got the kind you've got the kind of volunteer work right now that adjusts to your lifestyle where you can do it when you've got when you've got the ability. Yes. And so, you know, the other types like I've done 
film festivals and volunteering and things like that, where you have to actually go there and be there for the whole thing is a totally different situation. Okay. And and I can't do that regularly. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I've this got is uh... something I do. I can do it. Yeah. After work, whenever. Right. So. Okay. Okay. That's uh, good. Um, so as you know, you talked about belonging a little bit earlier and uh, see, Community Living Toronto has just celebrated 75 years and our theme was uh, was uh, focused around belonging. What does belonging uh, mean to you? I think it's, I think being part of a group of any kind, your family, your friends, your community that you live in, your online community that you interact with, just any oh it's hard I it's hard yeah. to put into words. Um but That's... feeling feeling supported by your tribe, your groups that you yeah, yeah. are involved with. I think you put it into words well. <laughs> but so much of belonging okay. is that feeling like what, what I feel yeah. like I belong here but what is it about certain places and people and spaces that you feel that versus others where you don't that's yes I think yes. you've got at some of those attributes for sure um so we're looking forward to the next 75 years of community living uh Toronto um uh and one of the things we think about is you know people with um, intellectual and developmental disabilities have um, over uh, many decades have become much more accepted, welcome as of right, living in communities and, ex and you know, it's just, it's, it's just uh, the segregation that we used, that used to be experienced and almost expected decades ago doesn't exist in the same way, but it, we're getting mm -hmm. to this place of where people are included in communities and now you want to be, feel like you belong. Um, as we look forward 75 years or even five or 10, what um, what does a better world look like uh, uh, to you? Well, I think sort of what I mentioned earlier that that we would just, everyone respects each other, accepts each other, lifts each other up and that kindness and generosity take the place of you know greediness and individualism i guess okay <laughs> kindness <laughs> and generosity versus uh selfishness and uh greed those are good yes. that's very aspirational i think that's uh, a good note uh, a good note to end on okay Thank you for volunteering with us and for uh, uh, for all the work that you've done connecting with people over the last number of years. I know that the Friendly Connections program helped a lot of people uh, during COVID, uh, and you were a part of that. And the fact that you've carried on and found this sort of connection and almost built this community of, uh, of people really, uh, really means a lot. You're a real example to the rest of us. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you. Thank you, Brad, and thank you for your time, Gina. It is wonderful to hear about your efforts and the connections we have built through this work. We hope that your experience will inspire more people to volunteer and join us in our mission of fostering inclusive communities by supporting the rights and choices of people with an intellectual disability. Once again, thank you so much. That is all we have for you today. And I would like to thank everyone for their support and a special thanks to all our presenters and to Brad and Gina. It was a pleasure to have you with us. This month, we'll also continue to talk about and raise awareness for autism. It is an opportunity for each one of us to raise awareness, spread kindness, and promote inclusion of people with autism in our communities. Again, we have our community spotlight on April 30th, a live stream with our CLTO influencers where we'll discuss more on the efforts and steps towards inclusion. 
Join us on Instagram and Facebook pages at 1 p.m. We hope you'll be able to do so. Our next Family and Friends update will be hosted live on May 21st at 12 p.m. So do watch out for the registration details. Thank you and have a great afternoon, everyone.